Welcome back to a new video lecture and in this lecture we discuss a new topic and it is related with the semicircular beams fixed at two ends which is subjected to central point load okay so here you can observe that the semicircular beams and the two ends are going to be fixed here okay if you observe carefully you can see that the two ends are going to be fixed and a point load is going to be happening over the center okay so our aim is to draw this uh, bending moment shear force and this twisting moment if this is the case okay so for that we are going to take the free body diagram and here you can observe that the second diagram represents the free body diagram of the beam cut at the point of symmetry so if you observe carefully the both the sides is this is semicircular beam and if you observe carefully the both sides here if you are taking the analysis here it will be repeated here also okay so we are only going to consider up to this much portion okay and here you can observe that so if you observe carefully uh, here some m0 is given and here also m0 is given actually this m0 represents this bending moment okay so if if you cut this uh, fray, this semicircular beam into half if this m0 is acting in anti clockwise let us assume it is acting in the anti clockwise then obviously there will be clockwise moment will be there such that only the structure will be in stable condition isn't it so similarly the representation here they are provided with this double arrow directions this m0 is represented in this way and if you observe that what about the reactions is going to happen if a w load is acting if you consider this is a frame and uh, this uh, this semicircular load is if you are taking in this way here some w is acting so obviously it is going to be w by 2 in both sides isn't it so you can easily calculate the or draw the shear force diagram through this uh, w by 2 values isn't it so if you observe carefully you can see that this uh, shear force value is going to be w by 2 and if you apply the sign conventions you can clearly take this side it is going to be negative okay so and this side it is going to be positive how you got that values is actually if you if you are considering in this way here w by 2 is acting and if here is w is acting and if you are taking a section over here if you are taking a section over here and if you apply the uh, rules which you have studied it so here you can clearly observe that if here if you are assuming a vx is acting in this way so vx plus w by 2 is going to be 0 so vx it is going to be minus w by 2 or any other rules which you have studied you can use okay no problem there is so here you will get this w by 2 and here also you will get this positive value you will get if you observe this values okay if you are taking a section from this side here w by 2 and if you are taking a section here so that vx it is going to be in this direction so vx is going to be w by 2 you can easily draw this diagram this is the case of shear force diagram so easily you can uh, draw this diagram okay fine then coming to the case of this uh, bending moment case so for that we will draw this diagram in this way that is you have to take the only half the portion okay and if you observe carefully and if you are going to take a section from here that is a point d it is already mentioned here and here it is going to be alpha okay so this distance if you are take, going to draw a perpendicular from in this way okay if you are drawing a perpendicular in this way you can clearly observe that this line is going to be perpendicular to this one okay this line is going to be perpendicular here we are going to apply a mathematical formula so if you are going to apply this line is going to be perpendicular to this line and if you draw a line in this way that is the line to be perpendicular to this line if you are drawing a line in this way okay so 
so the angle in between it is going to be alpha and if you observe here also it is going to be alpha okay that's the condition actually we need to calculate this alpha is going to be uh, taken to this side also okay so that's the condition mathematical rule then if you apply a moment m0 in the anti-clockwise direction let us assume in the anti-clockwise direction either you can take in a clockwise or anti-clockwise no problem there is no problem so if you are applying a moment in this anti-clockwise direction so the effect of this m0 will be in the the form of components okay here you have to take them into different components so here if you assume so in the case of forces in the same principle we have to use here also so if you are assuming a force in this way okay this is your force this is alpha so it will be f cos alpha and this one will be f sin alpha isn't it so in this case the direction it is going to be in uh, varying okay this f cos alpha is acting in this direction and this f sin alpha is acting in this direction so similarly here also the direction will vary so if you observe very clear carefully so this value it is going to be m0 if you observe if you are doing in this way this is going to be m0 if you are applying in this way this value it is going to be m0 cos alpha m0 cos alpha and uh, this value it is going to be m0 sin alpha okay that's a condition okay m0 cos alpha and m0 sin alpha our ultimate aim is to draw this uh, to make the equation for this bending moment okay so this effect of this m0 cos alpha to this point to this section we need to consider this m0 cos alpha what's influence of this m0 cos alpha at this point d so, so what's the influence of this m0 cos alpha at this section it is going to be m0 cos alpha itself isn't it this m0 cos alpha the influence of this m0 cos alpha is going to be the same way it is uh, uh, at the uh, section d it is also going to happen in this same m0 such that it will produce a sagging moment okay if you take a beam and if you are applying a clockwise uh, anti-clockwise moment so it will bend in this way so it is going to be sagging so you can write down as is in the positive okay then then coming to the influence of this w by 2 if you take the previous diagram if you carefully observe or if you draw a separate diagram you can if a w by 2 load is active why it is a w by 2 actually we are going to take this half the portion only so w by 2 is will produce a hogging moment isn't it hogging moment will produce and the distance also you have to take that also we mentioned in the last lecture uh, okay that's r sin alpha you can directly take that distance perpendicular distance okay so you will take you will get this value that is m m0 cos alpha minus this w by 2 r sin alpha so don't get confused about this sign convention okay so whatever sign which you are applying is going to be happen over this component over this uh, m0 cos alpha okay and regarding the twisting moment and one more thing you please note down there is no influence of this m0 sin alpha okay for producing this m0 sin alpha has no role m0 sin alpha has no role in producing a bending moment over this uh, portion this section d okay m0 sin alpha has no 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 role why since this m0 sin alpha is acting very parallel parallel to this section d actually we need to take the perpendicular value okay that's the case only okay then what about the uh, case of twisting moment if you take the twisting moment this uh, m0 sin alpha will have influence whereas this m0 cos alpha has no influence okay the twisting moment producing here okay so here we will take the influence of this m0 cos alpha this m0 cos alpha will m0 m0 sin alpha sorry this m0 sin alpha will produce a clockwise moment be negative okay 
So here we are putting this minus sign here. Okay. So this clockwise moment is going to be negative. And okay, then what about this? This value w by 2. Actually, this w by 2 already we mentioned in the previous lecture regarding that value, how you are go going to get. If you are applying a w by 2 or you have to visualize a three-dimensional uh, diagram such that only you will get more clarity regarding how this w by 2 will produce an anti-clockwise moment. Okay, so if you observe carefully, this is a frame and this is in, in this way it is bended. And okay, and if you are applying a load in, in this way, if you are applying a load here, and if you are observing from here, then here it will produce a uh, anti-clockwise moment such that it is going to be positive w by 2 arc into 1 minus cos alpha. Okay, so that is the case. So don't confuse with the sign convention of this m0 cos alpha and m0 sin alpha. Just think about this one only. If you are considering this moment as also forces, if you are considering this moment as also forces, if you are this m0 will be acting in this way and if this is this is a sign convention if alpha is here so this sorry this is this value it is going to be m0 and this angle it is going to be m0 cos alpha and this one it is going to be m0 sin alpha so this both are acting in different directions such okay that's only case you, you can consider very easily okay fine so now our aim is to calculate the or applying the equations so due to symmetry the flexural rotation is going to be zero so you can easily write down the equation du by dm not equal to zero okay due to symmetrical positioning this flexural rotation will be equal to zero that is the strain energy with respect to the moment which you are going to take it is going to be zero and if you observe you have to take the integration from 0 to pi by 2 why it is going to be in 0 to pi by 2 that is because we are only taking this half, half the portion only okay 0 to pi by 2 so m by i m by e i multiplied by dm by dm naught multiplied by r multiplied e alpha similarly this equation these equations we already mentioned in the previous lecture okay and our next aim is to uh, Sub substitute this value this m we have to substitute this value so in this integration part you have to be very carefully okay integration is very carefully uh, such that otherwise so many mistakes will happen so then multiplied by this dm by dm naught so if you take the derivative you will get this cos alpha then r d alpha okay fine then plus 1 by gj then minus m naught you have to substitute this twisting moment value here then okay then the, you have to take the derivative of this connected dt by dm naught so it, it is going to be minus sin alpha only okay so this is the case after that throughout the equation divided by or multiply by ei so this ei will be cancelled and here it is going to be ei by gj so you'll, you can substitute in this way gamma so after that integrate in this way that is going to be integral 0 to pi by 2 m naught then cos square you have to multiply this value is cos square alpha r d alpha minus integral 0 to pi by 2 w by 2 r square sin alpha cos alpha direct multiplication you have to substitute then here also the same procedure is repeated so please try to do by yourself okay otherwise you will be get you will get confused actually so m0 sin alpha you have to open up those brackets and you will get after that you have to substitute this cos square alpha in this way and this sin square alpha in this way and okay then after that take these steps is here you can directly follow up the integration procedure okay direct integration procedures after that you have to substitute this pi by 2 and 0 values is, and you will get the equation in this way and after that you come to a stage here in this way okay m0 r by pi by 4 minus wr square by 4 multiply 1 plus gamma gamma it is going to be ei by gj so and it is going to be equal to 0 so if you take this value it won't going to be 0 so this value it is going to be 0 and if you substitute this m0 value it is going to be wr by pi okay 
so with the help of this m w r phi you will substitute in the bending moment value you will get w r by phi then cos alpha minus w by 2 r sin alpha then alpha if you substitute that is if you substitute 90 degree that is at this point what is going to happen so it is going to be minus w r by 2 so it is in the symmetrical positions you can write down both the cases both the sides it is going to be by minus w by 2 r and our next aim is to check out the contra pressure point that is the change of sign okay the bending moment changing from positive to negative or negative to positive likewise so at which angle it is going to happen so if you substitute this m equal to zero and if you observe this alpha it is going to be 32.48 degree so if you observe carefully you can write down those values okay this both the sides both ends it is going to be wr by 2 and this angle it is going to be 32.48 degree and here if you observe this m0 value you already got wr by pi if you substitute this is the bending moment diagram then coming to the last case that is the twisting moment if you observe very carefully this uh, twisting moment at the point c it is going to be zero and if you substitute those values if you substitute those equation m0 you will get this value and if you substitute uh, this alpha equal to 90 you will observe this value okay observing this uh, point 1817 wr our aim is to draw this diagram also twisting moment so t is maximum at alpha where dt by d alpha if you take the derivative you will get the maximum value so alpha angle it is going to be 32.482 degree and t max if you substitute those values is this uh, twisting moment where it is going to be maximum or the maximum value if you substitute this 32.482 degree you will get this value and finally you can observe that this the torsion moment is maximum at the section where bending moment is going to be zero okay this bending moment is zero at this points and if you observe carefully this point a 187 wr this value we already calculate at this 90 degree isn't it this alpha equal to 90 degree we already got this value and this maximum value that also we determined that is a point zero nine two seven wr so that is going to happen at the section where bending moment is going to be zero actually this bending moment is going to be zero at that point this twisting moment is going to be maximum so that also you can easily mention here so so with the angles also you can mark down in this way this is the case of this uh, twisting moment diagram okay then if t equal to zero uh, if you substitute this t equal to zero and uh, if you observe this angle alpha you will get alpha it is going to be uh, 64.964 okay so at which point this uh, or at which angle it is going to be this twisting moment is going to be zero is observed at a, an angle of 64.96 that is a double of this value this okay uh, 32.48 degree double of that value so you will get this uh, twisting moment diagram in this way so both the three diagrams are very important so using this m then twisting moment then shear force value you can draw these three diagrams and you can mark down at which points of this twisting moment is going to be maximum and this uh, bending moment is going to be maximum you can clearly observe so i hope the section is clear and with this we wind up today's section thank you